My name is Kevin Sabet, and I'm going to talk with you about informing a smart approach when it comes to medical marijuana. I've worked in three different U.S. administrations in the offices of National Drug Control Policy, uh, as well as uh, received my Ph.D. in this field in drug policy from Oxford University and co-founded recently a group called Project SAM, that stands for Smart Approaches to Marijuana. It's a bipartisan group. Uh, that w works with the top public health scientists in the country, mainly in getting out the public health information about marijuana. Um, there seems to be a lot of misinformation about uh, the substance and about how marijuana really affects the uh, adolescent brain especially and things like driving. And, and really the thing that, that is, I think, moving the fact that, that marijuana is becoming much more harmful than it was you know, 30 or 40 years ago uh, that some people might be familiar with is the fact that the isolated uh, psychoactive ingredient, THC, which is what gets you high, uh, has actually been increasing you know, five-fold over the last 30 years. And the non-psychoactive ingredients uh, have almost been bred out of the modern substance. So marijuana is really just much more harmful than it used to be because of that. Uh, we're seeing the uh, you know, car crashes doubling. We're seeing uh, changes in the adolescent brain, lung complications, things that we weren't even seeing uh, 30 years ago on marijuana. We're, we're seeing much more now. So the question here in New Hampshire right now is really how can we responsibly allow the truly sick and dying to get whatever they need, even if that's marijuana, while not risking abuse, diversion, lawsuits, and government waste? I think if we come into this debate uh, and this discussion uh, with, with that in mind, we, we actually have some interesting solutions that I'm looking forward to getting to. Um, so let's first look at the pitfalls in some of these other states that have already had medical marijuana. Because remember, we've had medical marijuana for more than 15 years in many states. Um, the major pitfall we're seeing is that these states allow too many uh, vague conditions to be used to, uh, for accessing marijuana. So it'll have a list, often the, the law will have a list of you know, debilitating diseases, MS, cancer, HIV, etc. But at the end of the list, there's usually something that says, you know, or any other illness that the person thinks marijuana would provide relief for, or, or something like any other injury that has a symptom that could be uh, alleviated from marijuana. And that's really opened up to huge abuses, so much so that in all around the country, the average medical marijuana user is not the you know, person that people might think of when they're voting on this, um, you know, the 80-year-old woman with, with uh, fourth stage cancer fighting to eat, but actually uh, the 32-year-old white male is the average user in this country. Uh, over 98% of them have no cancer, HIV, or multiple sclerosis, glaucoma, no history of chronic illness, and actually a history of chronic alcohol and drug use. Um, so this isn't really getting to the folks that it was in, intended to get to when people with, I think, very good intentions came into this in the beginning. Um, also, we're seeing that the, there are dispensaries that are licensed by the state that allow cigarettes to be distributed, that allow, um, um, frankly, in, in many ways, marketing, even if, if they're not advertising on TV, the packaging um, that they have, the edibles, et cetera. And that's become a real problem all across the country with advertisements, um, with, with branding. We're seeing, um, even in states that, that don't allow this, we're seeing uh, in other states that are being imported to, for example, you know, Tootsie Rolls that are, that are THC Tootsie Rolls, so the active ingredient I talked about earlier. Um, these are sending kids to the emergency room uh, every day because they're ingesting this um, immediately. Ring pots, pot tarts, these sodas, candy bars, these are all things that are supposedly created as medicine. And um, I think that's something that we would want to avoid if we don't want to see increased marijuana abuse. And I think what's interesting is that you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that it's not the medical associations that are in favor of this. It's actually folks that have been wanting to legalize marijuana for quite a while. So if you want to legalize marijuana, you're very comfortable with this because that, that's what a legal market in this country would look like. Um, if you want to really get and isolate it to the sick and dying, though, that's probably not what you had in mind. Vending machines, we're seeing in Massachusetts, there are uh, now people from Colorado and other states that are coming with vending machines um, saying that this is for medical purposes. And uh, again, 
we fought for years to get rid of tobacco vending machines. We don't have prescription drug vending machines. I don't know why we would have marijuana vending machines. And, and, and the places that have had this are now paying the price. Since Colorado commercialized, really had dispensaries in their, in their state in 2007 and allowed that to happen, they've seen increases in emergency room. These are substance abuse treatment admissions. They've seen kids, 74% um, of them coming to treatment saying they, they received marijuana, something having to do with medical marijuana or a dispensary. Even 20%. Uh, of those going to the pediatrician that aren't even there for treatment, just going for a checkup, saying that they had gotten marijuana from a dispensary. We're seeing a doubling in car crashes. This is from when they had, um, when they started it, 2007 to 2011. And remember, car crashes have gone down in this country and in Colorado generally, but not when it comes to those with CHC in their system. It's doubled. Um, so we actually need a smart approach. We need something that's compassionate and responsible. And, and I, you know, I don't think anybody's saying that those who truly need marijuana to make them feel better, to ease the suffering of their pain from cancer, from HIV, from these debilitating illnesses, should be denied anything while we're doing the research around it. And so, but we have to do it in a responsible way. And there is a responsible way, actually. We're, we're learning about what Maryland has done. First of all, Maryland has had a medical marijuana law in the books for a while, which is essentially an affirmative defense, right? It's, it wasn't dispensaries. Then when they tried to implement dispensaries, they actually went for something called a, they're calling a yellow light approach. Very practical governor, practical health commissioner said, you know, we don't want to deny it to those who really need it, but we don't want the disasters that we've had in other states. Um, they've set up an academic panel that's appointed by the governor and legislature they're going to administer marijuana not in dispensaries but actually in hospitals in, in their academic teaching hospitals and they're really going to prevent edibles marketing anything that could be diverted easily to kids um, you could even imagine doing non-smoked versions of marijuana for the seriously ill and dying well what, what do i mean by non-smoked versions well uh, the reason i we i say non-smoked think about how we have morphine and opium in this country right we don't ask people to smoke opium to get the effects of morphine so I don't see why we would ask people to smoke marijuana to get its potential medical effects. There are other ways. There are mouth sprays. There are tinctures. There are ways to import this from other countries. There are ways to actually, it's much less risky for a state to produce a cannabis oil that maybe doesn't get you high um, than it is to produce smoked marijuana cigarettes that can be diverted. So this academic panel could actually call for that. And in fact, um, you could even in the meantime, before that panel has completed their recommendations, you could allow this uh, and, and the state could allow this to happen. Um, this is happening, by the way, in many countries throughout the world already. So there is a precedent of it. Uh, if you go to the SAM website, learnaboutsam.org, there's a lot more information on this. I was hoping just to give you uh, a very brief synopsis of the options here when discussing trying to do medical marijuana in a responsible way that does not increase abuse, diversion, the government uh, 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 tax dollars, which will have to be used to regulate dispensaries. That's been a disaster in other states. The lawsuits that businesses will have to contend with. Let's avoid all of that while giving um, the, this truly sick and dying what they need. Thank you.